What's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're actually going to be doing <gasps> grunge. I know, shocker. Probably never would have guessed it coming from me. Today I'm going to show you a few different styles that came out of the grunge movement. I'm not going to be like, this is grunge, this is grunge, that's not, and that's not, because I'm not the gatekeeper of grunge. I'm just a, a grunge enthusiast. And I happened to like grunge music back when it was popular. I was not into makeup then. I talked about this in my last video, but of course I did like the music. I did love the music videos. That's not going to stop me from doing this video and pretending like I have it all figured out, you know? So I am going to show you this look. This is a recreation of the half face I did of the historically accurate 90s grunge in my last grunge video. Uh, this is inspired by Courtney Love, Kim Gordon, Kat Bieland, the the corally red lip and the sleepy eye. That is what this look is inspired by. It is a really simple look. It's super easy to pull off. It's really cohesive and yet you don't have to try too hard to get it, which is what I absolutely love about it. It's not the only grunge look out there, mind you. I think we all know this. I did, I ruffled some feathers in my last video. People are like, well, the style can evolve. True, it can evolve, but grunge music and the movement and subculture that was spawned from the music, it's just, it, it kind of belongs in its own time period. Grunge is, there's no such thing as grunge now. I mean, there's the grunge aesthetic, but that's not grunge. That's just a completely different thing that was inspired by the subculture that existed in the early 90s. The ladies of grunge, they wore their makeup much like this. Very sleepy brown makeup, bright, corally, smudgy red lip. There were also other women of grunge, and we're gonna get to that in a second, but the red lip was a very, very, very popular trend around then. It was also kind of inspired by some punk music, like their makeup styles. Take a shot every time she says Courtney Love. Take a shot every time she says Courtney Love. Take a shot every time I see that comment in that comment section. Anyway, so I'm gonna show you how I got this look, of course. I'm gonna do two other looks. One of them is gonna be PJ Harvey, and I'm not gonna do the PJ Harvey look that is iconic to PJ Harvey, like the one everybody thinks of when they think of PJ Harvey. This look right here, you know, the blue and then this corally red lip. I'm not gonna do that PJ Harvey. I'm gonna do the PJ Harvey that you would see like photographed, you know? Or, you know, in some other show or some other scene she was on. The way she did her makeup, she would intertwine her makeup looks with the album that she was currently promoting or on tour with. So her makeup changed a lot. Her makeup styles changed a lot. It's just, it's PJ Harvey. She's amazing. Let's, let's be real. Gonna show you how I got hers. Another pretty easy look to pull off. And then of course we're gonna do Shirley Manson. I've had a lot of people request Shirley Manson here on my channel. Now, Shirley Manson herself will tell you that, well, she's like, she didn't tell me this personally. It's just, it's just something I read. She will say that Garbage is not a grunge band. She'll say it's like post grunge or alternative rock or alternative, well, grunge is all alternative rock. She would call it post grunge. But the fact of the matter is, Garbage was actually a band born out of the grunge movement in Seattle in the early 90s. So I'm gonna kind of group her in with this because when you think of like the ladies of grunge, the women of grunge, Shirley Manson almost always comes up and she had such an iconic style and such amazing makeup, though it was a little bit more punk inspired in my opinion. Uh, we're gonna do that. We're gonna do Courtney Love style again. Courtney Love, Kim Gordon, Kat Bieland. They all kind of have a similar style, which is this one, or my interpretation of it. This is not gonna be like a dead ringer for any of them. And it is also gonna be pretty, pretty much the same thing I did on the half of my face in my last grunge video. Go ahead and check it out if you want to. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna start with the Courtney Love look, which is the look everybody wanted me to recreate from my first video in full face form. I'm just gonna start with a CC cream, kind of sheared out on my face to get a pretty light coverage going just using this Real Technique sculpting brush. And I am gonna use a little bit of concealer, not a ton, but I do wanna brighten the higher points of my face as well as prime my eyes a little bit, just dotting on that Born This Way multi-use concealer. Setting it with a tiny, tiny bit of powder, not too much though, before I go in with the eyes. I'm gonna take the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette Taking this Morphe M506 brush, I believe, and I'm just gonna take that warm, light, camely brown shade all over my lid, into my crease, super messy, basically doing the same thing I did in the first video, just using a different palette, using some different colors here. Any kind of brown will work, really. And I'm gonna take that underneath my eye as well, 
just smudging it all around and I do have some like leftover eyeliner from my last look it's kind of hard for me to get off you know aside from that it might just work in my favor I'm gonna go in again with a little bit darker brown shade this is a reddish brown but a medium tone reddish brown putting that on my outer corner upper and lower lid just messily it didn't really take me much longer than what you're seeing here so yeah, anyway, I'm gonna go in with that cool tone brown in the palette in the bottom, and I'm taking this little Morphe brush, a tiny blending brush, and blending that on my outer corner, upper and lower lash line. Just trying to give that droopy effect, kinda like I did in the first tutorial, taking it under where my eyeball would be, like under my like eye bag, just to kind of accentuate that eye bag a little bit, and you know, giving that droopy, sleepy effect on my eye. It's gonna look a little different than the first one because again, I have some eyeliner left over on my lash line, but that's okay. Grunge is not an all one look kind of thing. Not everybody's makeup always looks the same, right? Just gonna take a little bit more of that light brown shade I started with, try to blend everything out a little bit. Then I'm gonna take that warmer reddish brown about like a darker like medium dark reddish brown and I'm just gonna try and fade that darker brown into the rest before I do my eyebrows I'm just gonna do them super quick fill in what I've got not be super super crazy about it then for blush I'm gonna mix these two blushes together like a pink and a coral works pretty well to give like a very natural flush and isolating that to the apples of my cheeks right there in the middle not using bronzer or anything then I'm gonna do mascara you guys don't need to see this other than the fact that I'm just trying to weigh down the outer part of my eye with it and for lips I'm just gonna use this NYX hot red lip pencil and then I'm gonna go into this Maybelline craving coral and that would finish the look All right, so for the next look, we're gonna do Shirley Manson. This is the fun one. This is my favorite that I did. It was so much fun. And you're basically gonna see the entire look from start to finish. If that brush touched my eye, I left it in this video. <laughs> so I think it's important though. I'm starting with this Real Techniques brush and that black shade in the palette. Any black shade will do. I like this one. Anyway, I'm going to cut out my eyelid right here and put a point on the end kind of messily. It doesn't have to be super perfect on the edges. It doesn't have to be super seamless. I'm not using a transition shade. I'm just building up that shape, opening my eye, making sure I've got the shape right, closing it back and forth, back and forth until I have gotten that outer V or angle bracket, as I like to call it, fully formed on the outer part of my eyelid. And I'm just blurring that around just to make sure it's, I've got like an even coat of that black or as even as I can possibly get it. And the outer part is going to be darker than the inner part, and it's gonna be very important when it comes time to add the color to my eye. So I'm gonna start building that up from the outside in, getting lighter as I go in. Again, you can see it just gets lighter as I fade it in. Not using another color, using that same black, just making it lighter on the inner part, darker on the outer part. Not a big deal, but I had to kind of take my time with it because there wasn't a whole lot of room for error here. I'm just using a straight up black, but I didn't do my base yet, so of course I can always kind of clean it up if I need to. I'm doing the exact same thing on my lower lash line here. Building that black up from the outer part and making sure I've got that oval, almost football shape going on my eye. And now I'm gonna do the other eye, same thing. Building it up from the outside in, making sure they match, get the football shape. Then I'm taking that same brush, cleaning it off, then I'm gonna douse it in setting spray. Lots and lots of setting spray. Basically just soak it. I'm gonna swirl it around in that blue, like a lot. Just like make the, like paint. I'm mixing paint. Have you ever mixed your own paint? That's what's happening here. Then. I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna paint it on the, yep, there it is. There's that, yep, I was excited. Anyway, um, that is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna paint that blue on the inner part of my eye. 
and you can see why hopefully now that I wanted it lighter on the inner part and darker as I went out because I want that blue to have a gradient underneath to follow so it's going to be brighter on the inner part of my eye and darker as it goes out that's why I did the black the way that I did and I'm just going to keep painting it on painting it on until I'm happy with the coverage and I'm kind of having to carve out that inner part just to make that line follow the same line that I started with the black that's, I'm going to do the same thing on my lower lash line. And I'm basically, again, mixing paint. Going back in for more blue, wetting my brush again if I need to. Easy, easy. There we go. There we go. It's, it's getting there. It's getting there. Let's do the other one. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. That's fun. That's, that's, that's just so much fun. So much fun. There's, like, nothing more satisfying in the world than, than this was where I was just painting eyeshadow on, onto my eyelid and I'll shut up now. Man, that's just so satisfying to watch. It's about as satisfying as it was to do. And that is about what we have so far. I just want to make sure that those lines are straight and even and not not blurred out and I'm gonna go into this Urban Decay Space Cowboy Moon Dust shadow and I'm gonna pack that over top of that blue and I'm gonna layer that until I'm happy with it until I've got Shirley Manson's level of like almost wet looking blue eyelids I don't know this this is also very fun not quite as fun as painting the blue but this was this was fun I can assure you I just kept putting glitter on, kept putting glitter on, kept putting it on, and then of course I've got to line my waterline. Here we go. And that's what I have so far. Got to put the hair up, do the foundation. So I'm doing concealer first because this foundation I'm using, I'm using a stick foundation. I like doing concealer first, but I'm not putting it right under my eye. I'm just using it to highlight the high points in my face and add brightness where I noticed that Shirley has brightness on her face in the makeup look I'm following. I'm going to use this Makeup Revolution stick foundation here quite heavily. She has a pretty full coverage base going in that video and I'm going to blend that out with the Real Technique sculpting brush and that will do. And this foundation doesn't oxidize. Another reason I wanted to use it because she looks like a ghost in that video. So I wanted to make sure that that foundation did the same kind of thing. I'm gonna tweeze my eyebrows. I always say I'm not going to, and this time, you know what I did it. I was like, screw it. I'm gonna thin these. I'm gonna thin these suckers out. I did it. There it is. Just a little bit, not too much. Then I'm gonna take that NYX hot red pencil again and just line my lips. Like, but I'm overlining because you can see. But to overline, I'm not moving my mouth. I over, and it's weird. I know. Try not to try not to watch my tongue. I get it. It's weird. But I don't move my mouth when I lay down the initial line. Because if I move my mouth when I'm doing that, then I'm like, the shape's going to be wrong. So I try to get the initial overline there first before I start moving my mouth around. Because overlining becomes extremely obvious when the shape does not look like a natural lip shape. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to look like your lip shape. It just has to look like a lip shape. Because when it doesn't, then you can tell your lips have been overlined. So don't move your lips until you've got that first line down. Then you can kind of start smearing it around. Because see, my lips are considerably overlined right now. And you can't even really tell that bad. You know what I mean? Anyway, just, just a tip. Then I'm going to take this NYX red lipstick that I will, I will put in the video right now. Anyway, uh, and go over that. I'm going to have like a bright red lip going and I'm going to have to mix a few shades until I'm happy with it because that's just what ended up happening. Then I'm going to go in with NYX Alabama because it just didn't look dark enough or blue enough to me. I'm mixing a ton of reds and then I'm taking that Bite Beauty Agave lip mask, the red one, and I'm going to gloss them up a bit. I don't want them too glossy, but I do want a nice like sheen on them. And then for my face I'm gonna bronze a little bit pretty low with a somewhat reddish kind of cool toned contour shade or bronzer kind of low on my face I don't really want it to be seen a lot from the front 
mainly from the side. I'm not bringing it onto my cheeks, just kind of carving out the cheekbones on the outer part of my face because that is what it looked like hers was doing in that video. She didn't really seem like she had a ton of products right on the apples of her cheeks. And of course I gotta put more glitter on because it just wasn't, wasn't freaking sparkly enough. And that's the finished look. Here it is. Shirley Manson. Milk. And there's glitter in my eye. Alright. PJ Harvey. Let's do this. Again, taking that CC cream. This is a different day, which is why my face is actually clean. But anyway, I'm going to put some concealer on as well. But I'm going to put it on in this kind of fashion. I'm looking at her in the picture I'm following to see where all the brightness is on her face. And that's where I am uh, putting my concealer. And I'm going to blend that out. And you don't need to see that, do you? Okay, maybe you do. Okay, let's do it. All right, smooth. That's enough. I'm going to add some hourglass powder under my eyes with that sponge and then I'm going to put some mattifying powder on the rest of my face. Kind of knock down the coverage a bit. I'm going to go into the Venus palette. I'm going to go into that cool toned brown shade and I'm going to put that all over my lid and up in my eye socket because that is what it looks like, like a taupe shade on her eyelids or at least that's, that's what I'm seeing. I'm not sure what you guys see. but. Then I'm going to take Aura, which is that shimmery shade, but I'm going to apply it with this brush, a fluffy brush, because I don't want it to be extremely shimmery. I just want it to give like a natural kind of satin finish. So I'm just going to put that all over my eyelid with that fluffy brush and build it up to the to till I'm happy with the sheen that I've got happening on, on, on my lids. There we are. Here it is. Now, the main part of this look, this eyeliner. So I sharpened up my eyeliner pencil. I didn't want to use liquid liner right away because it's not a perfectly straight line, sharp line, whatever. But it is to an extent. So basically the way I had to do this was because I have deep sockets and because my eyes are extremely round, I have to look sideways into a mirror to make sure that I'm getting that line right up against my lash line. So I'm not doing like a typical wing where I'm like feathering them straight up like at an angle from the get-go. I'm just following my lash line. This is actually a pretty easy technique. It's just bold. And then I'm going to take this little e.l.f. concealer brush and I'm going to smudge that line out until I've got it pretty straight. It doesn't have to be super, super perfect. But at this point, I definitely want to get all the little crumblies away and just get it straightened up there. Do the same exact thing on my lower lash line, but I'm avoiding the waterline because the PJ Harvey look that I'm going for, she does not have anything on her waterline. It is very clearly bare to me. So I'm just trying to make sure I do not get any on my lower waterline and going and this is this is really hard and tedious and annoying because I'm trying to get it as close to my waterline as possible without actually touching my waterline. It's just it's just a whole thing. But you know, here we are. And I want to make sure I get right up in the tear duct there, because that's 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 what hers does. Winging out the edge as I go but I'm not gonna take it too far out, just a little bit. Just I've got a little flick out there. Getting closer to kind of show you all just how annoying it was to blend out this eyeliner. Spoiler alert, I'm gonna do both eyes the exact same way. Then I'm gonna take a liquid liner. I'm gonna go underneath my eye as like straight as I possibly can and just clean up that line a little bit and try to make it a little more stark, but not too much. Like I still just want to make sure it's kind of smudgy, but not too much. I don't know. Got to strike a balance there. And then for blush, I'm just going to use that Coralista blush, just like a peachy toned blush, because that's what it looks like she's wearing in this photo that I'm following. And that is what I want here, right there. Just like that. And then the lipstick. So I put NYX Alabama on and I'm going to go over it with that Bite Beauty Agave lip mask. The red one. And that will be the finished look. Hers are pretty glossy too. So I left it as glossy as I could. There it is. I hope I did her proud. 
All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want me to do anything else like this in the future, please leave it in the comments. Like I said, I've gotten PJ Harvey before. I've definitely gotten Shirley Manson. And then of course the Courtney Love, everybody wanted me to do a full face of it. So here we are. If there's somebody I've forgotten, just please leave me some suggestions in the comments. Anyway, I hope you liked this tutorial. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to, you can follow me on Instagram. I will leave the link down below. And uh, if you're not a subscriber and you want to be, please hit the subscribe button on your way out. And I'll see you next time. Peace out.